Welcome back to This Pink Cloud. I am Kelly Reverb. And I will edit that out. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. I'm DJ Kelly Reverb. Uh, we are a show called This Pink Cloud. <laughs> We're a show called This Pink Cloud. We are all about the multiple pathways to recovery, uh, as well as mental health. I, I speaking of which we, here's we have, Chad. We have all had no, we have all had enough caffeine for the day. <laughs> uh speaking of mental health, always a pleasure when we have this guy in the studio. LPC L C D C the King of the North <laughs> Dusty Burrows, everybody. Woo! Ow! I've always wanna do that Ric Flair. Woo. Good to be here, y'all. Right. Good to be here. <laughs> good to, <laughs> Excited to good, be here. Good to have you really here, Dusty. Always. Mental health. <laughs> well, yeah, and then you are also an advocate for uh, what our guest is going to be talking about today. What is, you know. Absolutely. I'm a big advocate for all things psychedelic for the purpose of healing. Right. You know, connected with whatever you need to connect with. Right. And you're like uh, an advocate for ketamine therapy, microdosing, right? Absolutely. All those good things. I specifically do a lot of work with uh, psychedelic integration or psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. Right. uh, Sessions Wellness Group out in Flomo. I got it. Got it. Love it, dude. Well, thanks for coming in. Uh, always sitting in with me, the greatest board op slash co-host ever. Everybody give it up for Chad LeMans. Uh, hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks for having me. And, uh, is this Mac too close? Okay. I'm just, I'm glad to be here. I just wanted everybody to know who's out there listening or watching. Um, it's, it's cool. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Um, I got to be here. I like got to be here. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> anyway, dude, thanks for coming in, man. I know we had some, uh, you're welcome. We had some, uh, problems earlier with the board. We hey, had to switch it out. You're but everything's better. Now. You're welcome. Everything's better now. And everyone has processed and, uh, it's all good. It. Hey, by the way, uh, if you uh, like the show or if you like <laughs> the craziness that is this show, please like, subscribe, all that mumbo jumbo. Ring that bell, right, brother? Hey, brother, hit that subscribe button, dude, and I'll, I'll, I'll fucking get a fake leg, brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> or you already do. No, don't say that. Oh. Because then, f- then it would ruin the surprise if they hit the button and I, then I showed up with a fake leg. <laughs> anyway. All right. So I am excited to have this young Woo. lady in. Uh, her name is Brandy Alexander, and she actually has Awakened Collections. And you are, I'll let you explain exactly what you do. But Brandy, welcome to the show. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh so you get the the hallelujah music, not the uh, canned fart like I did. <laughs> I didn't give him a canned fart right. yet, but I'm waiting. Right. I'm waiting for him to try and say something <laughs> profound. But so, yeah, why don't you explain what you do right now? Yeah, so I'm the owner of Awaken Collections. Mm-hmm. I um, am certified in psychedelic facilitation, so I do guided journeys and ceremonies. I also do microdose coaching mm-hmm. and uh, microdose assisted trauma therapy with somatic experiencing. Okay. Um, and so those are the main two things that I do right now. Right. Well, let's get into the backstory a little bit and tell tell you know like how your journey led up to where you are now before we get into that kelly can i yeah. ask you to for to share with all the people that don't know what those titles quit are? side speaking <laughs> before we get into that kelly can we figure can we take a second to figure out how to use my mic yeah. <laughs> well i'm trying to face this one. yeah there you yeah. go you heard my question right yeah what was the, what was the question I cannot repeat myself. (laughs) (laughs) So he would like me to explain what those titles are. So somatic experiencing, it is a trauma therapy by Peter Levine, where you use the five channels of awareness to chat with the subconscious mind. Okay. So we use things like the sensation, a lump in your stomach or in your throat. And we think about that energy. We visualize that energy to remove those blocked and stuck energies Mm -hmm. and get them to purge our body. Are we talking about cleansing your chakras and... 
and whatnot? I mean, it's opposite. Well, it's not opposite at all. But yeah, you can cleanse your chakras, but that really doesn't have that much to do with all of the emotions that we might have swept under the rug Mm. as a child. We have actually held on into our body, Mm. right? And And some type of physical manifestation. Yeah, and so it causes the tension in your neck, um, all sorts of ailments. It's maybe that's what's wrong with your back, Chad. There's nothing wrong with my back. My back is perfect. Don't you talk about my back. <laughs> Don't talk about my back. Don't talk about my back. Don't talk about me. <laughs> so we use like uh, the emotions, the body postures, talking with your hands. And it's kind of more of like a meditative state. A lot of people close their eyes. All right. Um, and they go into the experience so that you can really talk about traumas that happen without having to talk about the trauma. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's a body-based rewiring technique for your nervous system and your mind. So okay. that's somatic experiencing. And when you couple that with the magic, of microdosing mm-hmm. it can be super transformative and yeah. w- so as far as microdosing what are the psychoactive sub uh you know uh elements that you're using uh for psilo- microdosing yeah, yeah. Psilocybin. psilocybin yeah so um i use psilocybin at 0.1 100 milligrams and then mm-hmm. i also use 19 other non-psychoactive mushrooms. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's a term called stacking so that you can get the best benefits for focus, creativity, anti-inflammatory properties and all of that. Mm -hmm. And and then of course, because I'm me, I infuse them with energy for your highest light and love. Ah, (laughs) So that's my little portion. Right. Um, Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Raina. Yeah. I didn't want to pass over that because a lot of people don't know what those terms mean. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we'll we'll dive into them even more yeah. later, but awesome. but yeah, let's get a little backstory going. Okay, cool. So, um, my name's Brandy Alexander. I don't know if any of y'all have ever Googled that, but if you try, it's an alcoholic beverage from the Prohibition uh, era. I thought you were <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was a porn actress. <laughs> well, uh, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, um, but yeah, so it's a dessert cocktail from the Prohibition era. Okay, Thanks, delicious. Zach. All right. Yeah, it is super delicious. Like right. I used to be like, yeah, I'm you know sassy with the kick totally <laughs> true uh, sweet and tasty but um my dad that that totally lives up for my dad uh-huh. um, my whole family was kind of riddled with addiction okay. just throughout my entire life um as a child i actually grew up completely opposite of that like i was a straight a student all kinds of stuff i was one of the best cheerleaders i was a cheerleader for 17 years mm-hmm. at the university of north texas as well wow okay. um and so Shout i out. go green yeah Shout Go me and green. Yeah. So um, all the chaos in my family home really um, played out in my patterns as a child because I was an uber people pleaser and I put a lot of emphasis on being successful. Uh-huh. Right. Um, that's how I got my parents' love. Well, right. my mother's love as because she was a single being mom. being the golden child. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the hero. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and so that's kind of how that played out for me. Um, but when I was in college, I mean, I became a pothead in one one joint. Right. You know, not that I'm not against pot. I think it's a beautiful plant. It could definitely be used for medicinal purposes. However, I've always been a lazy pothead, mm-hmm. which is not like yeah. honoring mm-hmm. that plant as a medicine at all. Right. So, sure. um, <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of where things turned a little bit around for me was in college, just getting more experience with life and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, I think that I've always had a really, um, like maybe I've been protected in certain ways right. by my angels and guides or whatever you want to say. But, um, I've been lucky to have a lot of balance in my life, um, with, when it comes to substance abuse, except for when I was, um, grieving. And okay. so I can yeah. get a little bit more. Into yeah. That. Yeah. Let's hear yeah. Uh, the, the reason yeah. for grieving and yeah. And yeah. Yeah. How All you right. process that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, about six years ago, I lost my soulmate. His name was Ian Brooks. He was killed on his motorcycle by a girl smoking PCP. Okay. She ran him fr- over from behind on 75 and it was a hit and run. And so, yeah, that was really the start of my cocaine addiction. Okay. Um, I thought at first it was alcohol, but really it was just anything numbing. Like even when I spoke to my therapist, she was like, wow, I could, you know, send you to, to a psychiatrist, but it seems like you have your own little cocktail that's right. working for you. And sure. I was like, yeah. Um, by that point, I'd already been like against the pharmaceutical industry just because um, actually... <laughs> 
<laughs> my first job out of college, I was a pharmaceutical sales. Ah, <laughs> there we so, go. For any 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 company, yeah, any companies we know of. No, it was uh, a small company. I right. sold head lice medication and allergy medication and dermatology medication for kids. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so it wasn't really that bad, but I totally saw the greed in the world. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Um, just like I mean, and as many people that like me and like as far as doctors, I'm I'm very personable. Like to have a product that would be less like covered by insurance, right? But yet these are my friends, so they're going to prescribe it all the time. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. there's just like so many little facets of it that were that really made me um, go towards my holistic path and sure. love non-traditional ways of healing. Right. Um, and especially because further down the line, when I started... Stuff that's yeah. not n- necessarily financially incentivized. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it could be looked at as even opposite, you mm-hmm. know? Um, <clears throat> so we, we never really know. In my opinion, like, I, I can be a conspiracy theorist a lot. Right. Yeah. So it's like... Yeah, who's putting the fentanyl um, out there for fentanyl poisoning and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. I would think pharmaceutical companies. Right. They're going to say the mob, but, I mean, follow the money. Who's going to benefit? Not yeah. the people killing their clients. Right. So. Yeah, and there's, there's the a people, lot of other stuff, too, the with the pharmaceutical industry. people nar- producing Narcan? Yeah, well, <laughs> the pharmaceutical industry, like, a lot of the stuff, when it's overprescribed to people who don't actually need it, it causes the exact symptoms that that drug requires. So then mm-hmm. they end up needing it after yeah. they didn't need it in the first place. So it's a, mm-hmm. it's a weird... Weird take two, dude. Yeah. yeah, I like what you brought up before. It's like, um, are doctors prescribing the best drug for you or the one that your friend is mm-hmm. a rep yep. for? You yeah. know, I, I have the same concerns and critique of the rehab industry. Mm-hmm. Are you sending <clears throat> this client to the rehab that's going to suit them best or the one that your friend works with? Right. Yeah. Well, There's that's whole the whole body, bro- scratch body brokering kind of thing. Well, yeah. Even if it's to the point of not criminal, it's still questionable and unethical. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I have I have people that will send, uh, you know, when I was at Phoenix House, right? Like, people would send clients there because they knew I worked there. Uh, but, I mean, it was also one of the only places around for, like, non- For uh, adolescents. Non-funding or, or yeah. non- uh, insurance and, and, and stuff like that. But when you move into like the other places, yeah, dude, there's a lot of places that make money specifically on repeats, dude. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. there's so many clients that go back to the same treatment center over and over and over. And it's like, you know, I, who's, who's the one referring them to do that? Cause obviously like, you know, it you might not work. have got it the first time, yeah. right. you know what I'm saying? And I work at a treatment center and, yeah. and it's like, with the average, you know, mm-hmm. um, approval rate at 14 days um, and they won't reapprove Unless you relapse. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah there's there's, there's no yeah, there's no we'll send you out profitability in that yep. mo- yeah, in that business plan. Yeah. But so okay, so okay. let's go back to the dealing with okay. grief. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> Sorry. I could talk in circles yeah. all day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so um in twenty eighteen, mm-hmm. Ian Brooks was killed on his motorcycle. That was my soulmate. That was like the l- highlight of my life, you mm-hmm. know, building all the way up to here, like dreaming about a little blonde afro baby, all of those things, right? right? And then just going on in an instant he was on his way home um, because he was the general manager at brick and bones a bar and uh, best chicken spot in dallas right Um, and so he was on his way home after closing the bar that night and Mm -hmm. never made it home and my life had turned upside down in an instant yeah Um, how long were y'all together not long enough, only okay. about two and a half years okay. total. Right. Okay. I mean, that's long enough to make sure it's yeah, really it's long good. Enough to, <laughs> long, long enough to fall in love, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and did not have any of the other problems. Yeah, <laughs> you right, know? right. So those were still on the way, I'm sure. But, you know, we would have worked through it. I'm, I'm definitely believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people, like, even have his name tattooed on him. Like, he was a really big highlight in Deep Ellum. Um, right. There were, like articles written about him with like holding a mugger down for 45 minutes until the police could get there and Mm. another time somebody uh he witnessed a hit and run and so all kinds of stuff like that he was Mm. a little beacon of light (laughs) in the streets Mm -hmm. over there right and so um it was it was yeah it was just a beautiful time of our life and to have it all ripped away from me Mm -hmm. in an instant um i was 
pretty shortly after diagnosed with uh, depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Right, which is normal. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, But it's also normal to not want to sleep and to completely try and move away from grief and suffering and all that pain. And Mm -hmm. I did that with nose beers um, and other beers. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so, um, so yeah, that was a very, very like dark time in my life. Uh Um, And throughout the whole time, I tried to remain helping myself, but all of the things that I was witnessing in my mind anytime I would try and sleep, they were just haunting me. So yeah. um, my therapist did some EMDR, which is similar to somatic Yeah, yeah experience. now explain EMDR to people because I, I find this fascinating. Yeah, Dusty? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so, so for me, okay. I, I know people, it's like I, um, I D- movement Dusty, stuff. <laughs> sorry, Dusty was napping. Yeah. <laughs> we caught him off guard. I did. Would you hit me with acronym questions? Okay. And then yeah, I go yeah, completely yeah. blank. Yeah. Right. So um, the way it was, because I know it's eye movement, um, but it's the, like the number one trauma the- therapy, that and somatic experiencing, right. to actually rewrite the programs in our minds. So the way mine was done was I would have um, buzzers in my hand to where mm-hmm. one would buzz and then the other mm-hmm. or I would tap my legs and she would take me through the most highly charged parts of the accident and mm-hmm. then when when it would get to that part because of the buzzing going on in my mind it was stimulating my right brain and my left ma- brain so I didn't get so lost in the emotion I was still able to use my logical side. It kept you side. grounded yeah, so yeah. to speak? Okay. So to speak and so then she would ask me well what's the best thing that could happen mm-hmm. at that point you know if that was still the outcome what would be the best thing that could happen and for me like he died fast he watched his mom uh like suffer for seven years right Mm -hmm. and so it was stuff like that that really helped me not wake up and scream like when I would go to sleep for about the first three months every time even if I disassociated from the dream I would wake up crying or screaming Mm -hmm. and so that was a reason to use even more cocaine right at that point yeah you know Um, and so with that, that really was a huge step, um, for me. She also told me not to go to, um, not to move, but uh-huh. at that time I was like, okay, well, he's the man in deep Elm. I'm the closest thing to everybody, like uh-huh. to him for right. everybody. So, so it's if, like, you're going to have your mm-hmm. permanently imprinted on yeah. the people there and yeah. that, that little uh, you know, subculture and yeah. everything that, that, oh yeah. And mm-hmm. so you're never going to be able to let that part go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I could see that. Yeah. And so instead of like, I knew it got to this point where I was like, okay, I fucking got to go to rehab or I need to just like get out of this environment. And so I, um, subleased a place in Venice for my friend. It was like right. walking distance from the beach, which is very crazy, but I didn't know anyone there. Oh, so yeah. instead of like getting more effed up in LA, I'm like, I got to get sober and yeah. stuff. And it was great while my sister was there, but when she left, like the anxiety and depression and missing my family and everything kicked mm. in twice as much and to all of the stuff that I had like shoved down as a kid started coming up like as far as like um, being molested when I was younger by uh. a woman I also at that time this time in my life was super dark I saw um, uh, like a 19 year old stab his dad to death like eight feet from my uber in LA mm-hmm. I got raped like so many crazy things happened yeah. in this time period I was like I got to get the fuck back to Texas. Right. Like, screw this. Sure. Like, my sister got on the next flight, came, helped me pack up. We got home. Right. And um, she's always been my savior like that. So I love you, Tracy. But um, shut so, up. Yeah. Right. yeah. Shout out, Tracy. <laughs> right. There we go. Thank you. Um, <laughs> And so anyway, then after that, coming back home, I stayed with my parents for a while. I still knew like the area wasn't good for me. And I Mm -hmm. still have my place down in Deep Elm and stuff. But um, that's really when I got back into therapy. And because of my time in L.A., though, that's when I started using psilocybin for Uh, my own therapy. Okay. Um, Now, did it start off recreational or were you recommended this as a as a trauma based therapy? 
the recreational part happened in college. Uh, okay. so, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. That, okay. yeah. And I mean, like, yeah, that all happened more so in college. And mm-hmm. at this point, um, I was actually like marinating my, I made my own little ritual. So it wasn't anything that I knew at that time, mm-hmm. but I would like marinate, marinate my mushrooms um, in their little mason jar with all my crystals around them for weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, I would make the most like intentional tea and stuff like that. Once I did move um, back from my parents' house to Deep Elm. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I started doing so that I wouldn't be going out to the bar every weekend. Right. And so to me, it was more therapy, um, okay. but it wasn't necessarily the quote unquote therapy that, yeah. Um, yeah. that you go through. But that was what, that was like the beginning of it. And the more like that sparked my mind and started helping me deal with things. Like I remember one night I was deep in the medicine and I like literally saw me in a different body, like slitting the girl's throat who killed Ian. Mm. And I knew it was her and I knew it was me, but neither of us looked alike. And mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit, I wonder if that really happened, you right. know? But it was like this big weight was lifted off of me somehow. And I was like, all right, well, okay, you know? Right. And then I, that's when I started getting a lot of messages like, um, and to me, they're messages from Ian. And I'd always mm-hmm. had a really great connection with him on the other side of him showing me signs and synchronicities just like at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, but he had told me like, you know, you're going to turn your biggest tragedy into your greatest gift. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's why I'm here today. Right. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, the psilocybin therapy that I just like kind of came up with on my own because, um, of the, of my stay in LA and all of that stuff and just really needing to heal. Like that was a huge part of me walking out of my depression. I mm-hmm. still did a lot of the other measures, like see my therapist and stuff like that. Right. So you're not just doing shrooms by yourself. It's yeah. like you're coupling that. And I think that's an important thing uh, and factor in recovery and using psychedelics in recovery is the whole counseling yeah. portion and of the it. the intention behind it. Yeah. And yeah. the intention behind, behind it. it. If you're just yeah. doing it just to get fucked up, yeah. you know, then, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, dude. Yeah. Remember, you know, we had, just replacing, <laughs> we had replacing chance, addictions. We yeah. had a chance to do ketamine ther- therapy for free from... Uh, what you would call it? Right. Neuroglow? And I, yeah. yeah, from Neuroglow. And I was like, dude, I just, I've been trying to enhance my spiritual life, dude. I think I should probably <laughs> right. do it. And then Kelly was like, I don't know, man. I would look at that. And I, I started thinking about it. And I was like, no, dude, you know what Chad wants to do? Chad, Chad wants, wants to get, get fucked, fucked up and up. listen to Radiohead, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Chad wants to do, yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, so a lot of my, like, um, sessions were not like fun. (laughs) I think that's a huge part of psychedelic therapy is people think like, Oh, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to melt and be one with everything. Yeah. Yeah, No, the most transformation comes through the hard shit. You know, well, it's it's funny because I also did, um, the ayahuasca ceremony Mm -hmm. as an entheogen. Um, yes, Mm. but, uh, I, I, you know, I did that and I was like, I don't think I want to do that shit again, man. <laughs> I go, that was fucking hardcore. Yeah. And, I go, and I felt like I was on an ayahuasca drip for yeah. like the next two days. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's like that. It's like, like when you're a kid and you have a nightmare and you don't want to go back to sleep. Yeah. That's exactly how it was. <laughs> it was like, I just watched The Exorcist. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's uh, a good point. It's not for everybody. Yeah. It mm-hmm. really isn't. That's mm-hmm. why I said talk to people that you know. Talk to people yeah. that you don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. That have had the experience of if it's right for you because it might not be right right well yeah. and and also ayahuasca i think is probably a lot different mm. than microdosing yeah. mushrooms you yeah know? and i use like a lot of modern like techniques um i know a lot of times in ayahuasca ceremonies and stuff they're like sit be still you know blah blah all of that stuff that tells you like uh, self soothe without self soothing, like put all that energy in your body and don't let it out. To mm-hmm. me, I'm like, let's roll around, let's thrash, let's yell, let's activate that stuff mm-hmm. and get that energy out of our body, you know? So I highly encourage it. And then when you couple like that with when we're talking about like a, mi- a macro dose of mm-hmm. uh, psilocybin, it's very healthy to be chatting with the subconscious mind at times so that you can move through that. Like mm-hmm. um, this uh, two weekends ago, I I actually did a grief retreat um, mm-hmm. with some with some ladies, and okay. they've all experienced grief in a really profound way. Mm-hmm. And so, um, 
And we did like one person a day. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't just think that everybody going into one <laughs> a room, group sure yeah, yeah, putting yeah, on right. blindfolds and like eating just a bunch, and then right. being told to be still and be quiet. Yeah, like that's not really the way that I facilitate it. I'm uh-huh. not saying that that's not right for some people, um, but my real goal is to help people connect with the innate wisdom within themselves, right, and within their own healing journey. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that's well, how uh, let's out because I, I want to talk about that more. But real quick, let's throw to our sponsor, which is Max the Axe. He has Lone Star Injury Attorneys. Attorneys. <laughs> See, I have to talk through this every time. So it's thispinklawyer.com. Thispinklawyer.com. <laughs> and he'll just sit here. It's like having a little Le minor, minor bird like next to you. <laughs> Build. Or, or like if you have that echo or on like a mic, it's like talking through microphone. it and it's just like being able to get your, your thoughts out you have without no getting interrupted from the echo. <laughs> It's yeah. what I do. It's so, but it's really, it's a skill I've adapted to tuning chat out. So it's, it's like no schizophrenia. It, it's yeah. beautiful. A little bit. Yeah. It, 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 this is real life schizophrenia. You know how they pronounce <laughs> schizophrenia in French? Schizophrenia live. You know how they pronounce schizophrenia in French? Schizophrenia. No, schizophrenia. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Got him. Anyway, yeah, man. Uh, but if you go to thispinklawyer.com, Dot it com. will take you to Lone Star Injury Attorneys. Attorneys. He will get his. He will get you the maximum results he, for your he'll get personal you, he'll get you results that are injury maximum. needs. Needs. That's right. Needs. Anyway, and then we also have some music uh, that is actually streaming, or we don't, and also downloadable for I don't know. free. I don't know, man. I don't think we have any music. I think we do. Uh, I don't think we do. Okay. All right, and we are back. Uh, those songs are actually, uh, the the second one is actually streaming right now. That's uh, Donald Glaude's remix of our track called Open Up. If you Open go up. to Spotify. Spotify. Uh, or Apple, Apple Music. Music. Apple Music. Apple Music. Apple, Sp- Apple, 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 Apple Music. Or, or the YouTube. I got to the Spotify. There too. Or the Apple Music. Or this YouTube. And then we also have the other one available for download. So if you go to uh, the SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Um, it will be on there. SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud. Exactly. And you can download the act. Uh, what is it? The uh, reflector. reflector. Arcade reflector. Fire Reflector. Yeah, exactly. Arcade Fire Reflector. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, did you have anything else smart ass to say? Uh, dude, no, you're that's the one it? being a dumbass. You've got to have a smart ass to counteract that and become neutral. All right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, fair man. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Physics. All right. Uh, okay. So we were talking about uh, the, I guess, different pathways you offer as far as, you know, uh, well, A, I have a question. So when you're doing the psilocybin therapy, mm-hmm. I mean, is that, is that legal or is that like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, how does it not work? Yet. No, okay. not yet. Yeah. So, um, but there are, are things in the works. With okay. That, so that's cool. Um, if you want to know about my personal journey with that, is you, that what you're asking? Sure. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to share. I mean, I'm going to exercise the first amendment, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm becoming an ordained minister and starting a there psychedelic there church. Um, so and it's an in entheogen. Yes. 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 So yes. there's that. Okay. Um, so yeah, on the way. Okay. Um, cool. To being legal for me. Right. But, um, as far as what I do, I mean, I'm, I meet a lot of people at holistic fairs and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Right. Um, so that's really cool. Is that what we're asking? Well, like, what whatever. I, I mean, okay. whatever you want to share and then, <laughs> yeah. you know. 
Um, well, as far as the psychedelic therapy, what I would say is like most um, important is for people to find something, somebody that's right for them. You uh -huh. know, there is a complete difference in doing psychedelics recklessly, mm -hmm. like we all have done probably right? back yeah. in college or high school or whatnot. Sure. And then actually doing them with a guide that's going to help them, uh, you know, stay true to their intention and really uncover like those hidden layers of what caused the addiction and deal with that. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so that's what I would highly recommend for me, microdosing. I've worked with a lot of people with microdosing, um, and addiction. Mm -hmm. And so, um, one lady, she did like an eight week program. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I also serve DMT, which okay. is also highly not illegal or not legal. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and DMT, <laughs> DMT is the active ingredient in ayahuasca. Yeah. 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 So. And so, um, it's NM DMT and, um, we we smoke it three rounds. Um, it's called like a Mayan love ceremony. And so right. we go into the medicine and then we integrate, go into the medicine, and then we integrate and then go into the medicine. Right. And funny so, thing about DMT, it's actually found naturally yeah. in in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so it's a, the mimosa tree bark uh -huh. is where is the NM, NN DMT. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's um, gotten from the Yucatan province. Uh -huh. um, so that's a beautiful, beautiful ceremony, honestly. Right. Um, with DMT, it's something that I wouldn't, I don't suggest for my first time psychedelic oh, no, users. Dude. Right. Which is no. what a it's lot adva of people, It's advanced yeah. death yeah. jam. It's like diving yeah. in the deep end. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude. Like, yeah. hey, hey, get strap in, buddy, because you're <laughs> fucked for the next 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Blast off. You're gone. <clears throat> um, but it, it has given a lot of meaning and purpose to my own life. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one reason. Do you see the me mechanical elves and everything like that that no. people talk about? No, I like. Like the first three times that I did it had mm -hmm. complete disillusion of ego, aka I died. Yeah. I felt like I died. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then well, I that's how like, I had with yeah. the ayahuasca. That's why it was frightening <laughs> because, oh, yay. I, I got to experience what death was like. <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. It was just great. Yeah. You know? But then when once I did die and I went to the other side and was with Ian, uh -huh. like that was like, holy shit. Dude. Right. Like, and then I all of this grief that I didn't even know and like guilt that uh -huh. I didn't even know was in me was there because. Because, like, consciously, I knew I didn't let that happen. Right. Right? But mm -hmm. in my mind, like, I uh, coming out of that, I was like, oh, my God, I let him die alone. Like, I right. had any fucking I choice yeah. in it, you know? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then, like, all of this grief came up because I felt like I had let him do that alone. Uh-huh. Um, so round two happens and um, I guess die again. Most people don't die nor more than once in a ceremony. Right. right? Sure. So that was cool. I die again and I go over and I see my dad and I had just walked my dad to the other side. Um, he died from cancer about right. two months before. Well, and this. that's why I did ayahuasca is because I lost my mother. So I was yeah. trying to, you know, mm -hmm. get some closure and deal with that grief as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I just saw my dad's hand and like being wrapped up in his love and him telling me how how great of a job I did. Mm -hmm. um, it was completely opposite of the first uh, ceremony, even though I died again. And then the third round, I'm like, surely I'm not going to die again. Well, guess what? I fucking did. <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> I was like, oh no. But um, like... DMT has a way of like speaking to you. So I don't, I disassociated a lot from the third round, but I just remember hearing, this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. And I was like, what mm. the fuck is for me? You mm. know? And then like a week later I was like, dude, I'm going to So Mastery, which is So Mastery Therapeutics. It was this uh, school I went to in Colorado where I got certified. Yeah. And these, okay. Yeah. And so that's that's pretty much what I contribute to the third round was like right. actually and getting me to And psilocybin is actually is actually legal in, in Colorado. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, ceremonies are super profound, um, but also like the magic in microdosing is amazing. Mm -hmm. So uh, big doses or ceremonies, guided journeys, whatever you want to call it, will, you know, cause big shifts immediately. Mm -hmm. But microdosing helps you make those little shifts daily. And so when we change our internal world, we can change our outer world. Right. And I think the reason why I started on this topic was because mm -hmm. one of my clients, who um, had been drinking every day since she was 14, struggled with cocaine addiction, all of these things. Um, she, we did a microdose journey together. Mm-hmm. 
for eight weeks as she stepped off, um, one of her big fears was around the withdrawals of alcohol. You right. Know? Um, and so that was a reason to just. And that's drinking. a real thing. Yeah. I always point that out. It is. That it's huge, yeah, you can die to, from it. Y- yeah. huge to do yeah. a medical detox. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. this would have been like her third medical detox in mm-hmm. like three months. Right. You know, oh, yeah. so really mm. there was like her, her story was just a little bit different. And mm-hmm. so I'm not, I'm not a medical person at all. Um, but, and knowing her and um, it just like like our journey together, it was so easy for her to step down every day and cut her dose in half. And so um, by the end of the eight weeks, she was completely sober for two days. And then um, then we did a big dose of psilocybin. We did a six grams mm-hmm. psilocybin tea. That and- ought to do it. I mean, mm-hmm. that ought to do it, <laughs> but do it, dude. we followed it up the next week with a DMT ceremony, and she had, like, uh, three weeks later was the most she'd been clean since um, it, since she was 14, mm-hmm. but she was clean for about seven months with mm-hmm. some slips up and down, so um, that's cool. She's doing good now <clears throat> as right. well, so that's really good. It's not something that has been an active pattern for her. <laughs> However, with any psychedelics and addiction, I think it's an accelerator. Would you agree, mm-hmm. Dustin? Absolutely. You still have to do the inner work. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Overcome it. Yeah. There's some domains of your life that you need to already be working on, you know, mm-hmm. what you're putting into your body, food wise, drink wise, mm-hmm. sleep wise, what kind of mindset you're utilizing, all sorts of things. Because if you just do these psychedelics, it won't just magically fix you. Yeah. You yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest <clears throat> um, barrier I run into mm-hmm. often. Um, people are like, I don't want to change any parts of my life. But I want to feel better. Yeah. I was like, well, you got to be willing to do the small things <laughs> where you can jump into the yeah. deep, right. deep end. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think, you know, from a grief perspective and from an addiction <laughs> perspective, where do you see us missing the mark as like addiction professionals and mental health professionals? Um. I think it's really just like the root causes, like dealing with those root causes. to me. Um, and I'm not a specialist as much as you or anything like that. But to me, it seems like addiction is the behavior. So what's causing the behavior and get, uh, really addressing the, the feelings and needs under that, you know, and I'm sure you do that in your practice. So Absolutely. I don't know that you're actually missing the mark or anything. So that's a strong way to I put think, that. I think you're but. missing the mark, Dusty. I think you so got I missed, it all I missed the mic. So <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's... That's the big thing that I, I come into contact with is seeing the addiction as a behavior as mm-hmm. a as opposed to the core issue. Yeah. And I'm like, it, it did manifest itself when you were a little baby. Mm-hmm. Yep. It did later on yeah. in life when you got older, usually adolescence or beyond. Yeah. So it is completely a behavior. Mm-hmm. And if it's a behavior, then we can modify that yeah. behavior. Yeah. And in a lot of the, so like, you know, when, when like the, the big book and stuff was written in the thirties, right? It was a world where, uh, if you were an alcoholic, it's just because you like to drink too fucking much. You were too much stressed out. You were too this, you were too that. We live in a world now where there's just so much stuff that, uh, you know, it's, it, it's out of boredom or it's out of worry or it's out of whatever that we start using and start drinking most of the time. I see this most of the time. Um, and there's mental health aspects too that play into it and why they might not be primary at first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They certainly exacerbate everything else and then Mm -hmm. the two just grow together so like a smooth i don't i don't i don't want to say an exact percentage but the majority of people that i see you know what i mean it's a it's some sort of primary and secondary thing it's no longer just like oh you just drink too much you know what i mean Mm -hmm. or you just use too many well i was going to also point out that you know bill w was an advocate for lsd in the 12-step program and he basically kind of got that shot down but i do have a question for both of y'all so what would you say to uh someone that's just going oh they're just doing you know doing drugs to get away with it or you know or you know the 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 devil's advocate oh yeah they're just doing it just to get fucked up and just just escape reality you know anybody like psychedelics to escape reality oh okay yeah and and just abuse in general oh well they're just trading addictions you know like what would you say to that well, I mean, I think that is possible for some people to be trading addictions. Okay. I think when you actually use it in a therapeutic sense, um, you realize that like even a microdose, um, that's why you have scheduled off periods so that one, you don't become intolerant to mm-hmm. it and there's still the magic in the medicine. 
but two, it's to help integrate those those breakthroughs and stuff like that. When we are actually doing the integration work and making the breakthroughs in psychedelic therapy real to our bodies and our nervous systems, and then transition that into making daily shifts in our life to where we are, you know, changing our routine and bettering ourselves, mm-hmm. like integrating that medicine, you don't have to keep coming back to the medicine, right? You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and and then honestly like self-love and personal growth is so addictive like then you can just keep doing that if you want right yeah Uh, in another way to address it is there's i mean there's 300 organizations at any given time globally doing research on psychedelics so if you really have strong opinions um do the reading you yeah know, look yeah. around it's either going to make you steadfast in your opinion or make you take another look at your opinion yeah you right know? and then in australia i know they just did the mdma thing for ptsd which is a huge step for that uh um, yeah. first country to legalize yeah, first it country to legalize therapeutic, our therapeutic use. use and ptsd and as somebody who had p PT- or has ptsd and then uh dude like there's so many times even in my active addiction where I was doing, uh, I wasn't doing ketamine therapy, or I wasn't doing any of that type of therapy. But uh, it I was, was doing ketamine abuse. Oh yeah, I was. It was. I was <laughs> like ketamine abusing abuse it. therapy. Well, I would do like these massive doses of like everything and stack them all together. And it was like, I don't know. It it really when I got sober later, like all of those experiences were so invaluable because it got me to think um, outside of here. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is where all the fucking trouble and everything bad that was happening. And once I was removed and saw like the absolute lack and illusion of control that I had in my life, like, like I'm I'm not in control of any of this shit. Mm -hmm. Right. And the entire time I'm sitting here thinking I'm in control of everything. (laughs) And it's like that, that dissociation from like that normality of Jesus Christ. I'm using all these cool words. This coffee's great. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But the, the, the normal way of thinking, it's like, dude, Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Blah, blah, blah. Well, once you cross a certain line in your addiction, no, you fucking can't. No, you can't. It's no longer up to you. And when you can be removed from like that, that level of, you know, control and, and that fear of all that stuff that you had in that control. Stop fucking putting your hand. Shut up, in. dude. I can it's do whatever like, I want. Chad, it's fuck like, you. Uh, I, I know you're about to switch the camera and cut yeah, me off. Yeah, because I have a fucking question, <laughs> you okay. fuck. It's how the show works, yeah, dude. dude. Well, fuck yourself. Do it in a second. All right. So anyways. <laughs> like, I, fuck you, Chad. <laughs> fuck you here, dude. I touched it. I think we need to yeah. take oh, a moment. Anyway. So the, it was like in those moments when I, when I experienced complete... Like out of, out of it, dude, like just fucking out of it. Like I'm not even here. Those moments were the ones that like, now that I'm sober, I can see the reason, like the way that I think. So I know why the psychedelic stuff works is because it gets you outside of your fucking self for one. Well, so I had a question for Dusty, like as far as that goes, like as a professional clinician, how do you see, you know, do you have like, you know, some personal experience? And I mean, obviously leave the names back, but have you seen results from, you know, positive results or negative results from as a clinician? Yeah, I've seen both. I've seen amazing results from people. Um, They were able to stop. They were drinking every day. They had a severe alcohol use disorder um, fueled by PTSD, fueled by all sorts of different things. So you've seen it work firsthand. Yeah, if I hadn't at this point, I would have backed up and shifted direction. But all I see is continuous growth from people. Right. I think what Chad was saying, too, even if you're using things recreationally, if you go on a crack bender for a week and you get out of that and then in – recovery and go what did i learn from that yeah so even if you have a recreational experience it doesn't mean it comes without merit you know Mm -hmm. and i wanted to also mention too you guys um mentioned mdma and Mm -hmm. you know australia being the first country to legalize it for therapeutic use we're there now at the united states Mm -hmm. so um maps which is rebranded to lycos Mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals has already sent the information needed for the fda to look at that so by the end of 2024 you might be living in a country that legalized mdma for therapeutic use right which is exciting because what i've seen that do 
even in my wilder days using MDMA, that can really, really help you. So yeah. again, when you're using things recreationally, it doesn't mean that it's for nothing. Yeah. I look back and reflect on some of those experiences and I learned a lot from them. All right. Now I can take those in a clinical setting or therapeutic setting and hopefully soon a legal setting. I don't think you could be mad and on MDMA no. at the same <laughs> time. I don't think that's happening. Because what we want to try to avoid is re-traumatizing uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Are folks that need to process trauma? Right, and DMA really helps you with that. Yeah, right. It does. So I have another question. So the follow up question is like, okay, so you said you have seen, you know, uh, positive effects from it, but what have you seen like as far as as it not working for somebody? I think the easy answer to that is those domains of living that I mentioned before. If you're not adhering to the the healthy living, you're uh, going to have problematic mm-hmm. stuff. So, right. so I suggest to people, even if they don't have a uh, desire to stop drinking permanently, I'm like, well, if you're going to do the six session protocol, mm-hmm. stay sober that four or five weeks. Dive yeah. into that a little more, yeah. the six session protocol. Yeah. So so the, the company that I like to refer to and that I was actually a patient is uh-huh. Neuroglow, and uh-huh. they do six sessions in four to five weeks. Mm-hmm. So if you can't just work on your sleep, work on eating healthier, not be using, whether it's uh, THC, alcohol, cocaine. Mm -hmm. If you can't stop that for just four weeks, well, Mm -hmm. you can really give yourself a fighting Mm -hmm. chance at healing. We need to take a look at the severity of your use disorder and really categorize or actually... um, Categorize uh, uh, another word for categorize. Put that at number one. Uh, right. Yeah. Prioritize. 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 Yeah. yeah. So Got totally it. blank. Um, uh, prioritize that, and then we come back to the ketamine. So I had a gentleman, mm-hmm. um, everyday pot smoker for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And he went to one ketamine session. He was like, dude, Dusty, that's not for me. And I said, well, are you still using pot every day? He goes, yeah. I said, I want to challenge you. Are you willing to do it? And he said, mm-hmm. yes. And so uh, a couple of weeks later, he's off the THC. He did the session protocol of six sessions, and it was a game changer for him yeah. mm-hmm. because he it didn't have the same effect whether he was using high potency THC every day that it would when he kind of cleared his brain out. Right. Well, it's mm-hmm. kind of like the whole innuendo. You're not supposed to drink on certain medications yeah, yeah. because yeah. it negates like, you know, the the typical stuff that they give you for, you know, bipolar disorder or yeah. whatever. Even if you're drinking on top of that. Yeah. 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 And when dude, I had before I even got the chance to talk about my PTSD, it was 22 months of like being locked up and then going to treatment for two months before my fucking therapist was even able, able to bring it up and have any sort of reaction from me. Cause I still didn't think I had it. Right. Obviously I knew something was wrong, <laughs> but then after that 22 months and it, it was just like a fucking breakthrough, yeah, you wow. know? And then I, I guarantee you a lot of that has to do with all the times that I've been, I've gotten out of here, dude. Cause mm-hmm. I've, and and we were talking about that uh, the ayahuasca and all this stuff. It's like strap in, dude. Yeah. You, you got some shit you don't want to deal with. Strap the fuck yeah. in because it might come up. Yeah. When I was working at the last organization, I'd have some of the LCDC say, "Oh, well, I got this client. They want to do some trauma therapy." And I said, mm-hmm. "Well, how many days abstinent do they have or weeks?" Oh, they're not. They're still using. I said, "Well." I want to work with them on their trauma, but they need to put together some abstinence first because it's a rough road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it can make you go darker and deeper oh, yeah. into relapse. Oh, yeah. And, sure. And uh, I don't want to be a part of that unnecessarily. You know, so yeah. I like, put in the work, do the work, you know, get mm-hmm. clean for a little bit and let's talk about it. Literally, no. I, every time I went to counseling or every time I did any of that stuff, guess what? I was like, oh, this fucking sucks. It's stupid. It's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was high as shit the whole time. I'm not good. I can't get into the places in my brain. Mm-hmm that I need to get into if I'm completely numb from the outside. So Yeah, and even if, you know, the therapist and you are able to work to and get into that place, what are you going to do with that once you get there? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Or, Nothing. Right. You're still going to be using or go worse. spiral of trauma, Yeah, you know? Right. <coughs> well, let's talk about, uh, you know, more of what, uh, like, as far as what you offer as, uh, you know, as a business and as a practice, what yeah. do you have, like, uh, available if somebody wants to explore? A, where can they get a hold of you and then tell yeah. tell them what's available? So, um, awakencollections.com or on Instagram. So, mm-hmm. the, do you, um, A-W-A-K-E-N-E-D. 
collection c-o-l-l-e-c-t-i-o-n-s dot com on instagram or spell that backwards absolutely not (laughs) i'm just kidding taco cat (laughs) that was the anagram we were talking about earlier because it's spelled the same as it taco cat yeah i was like that took me a second to picture that in my mind but i get it yeah, so um, you can find me on the social medias or on my website. You can book a consultation directly from there. Um, I do somatic experiencing therapy, mm-hmm. um, individualized sessions, or I do um, guided psychedelic journeys. Mm-hmm. I'm hosting a plant medicine retreat the, for the full solar eclipse. Ah. So that's really fucking awesome. Right? Yeah, be that's coming up. Uh, yeah. The first week of April. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, it's going to be very, very cool. Okay. Get to combine all of my little tools that I use, like sure. sound therapy, a static dance, kundalini yoga. All right. Um, so yeah. What is wh- okay? So what is the difference between uh, a regular yoga and then kundalini yoga? So kundalini yoga has more to do with the chakras. It's about w- awakening the kundalini energy, which is said to live at the base of your spine. Uh-huh. Um, it's I really feel that Dr. Joe Dispenza, who teaches people how to heal with their minds, also does kundalini, but kundalini adds mantras um, from Sanskrit. It is a more spiritual practice to me, but it awakens that energy at the base of our spine and brings it all the way up through our chakras to reach our third eye Mm -hmm. um, and enhances the state of awakening, right? But it also has breath work. Mm -hmm. So um, the even like the breath of fire first originated with kundalini yoga, Mm -hmm. um, and they've come up with all these different breath work types from it so it kind of combines everything with body movement and um it really just makes me feel super great to be right. honest cool. <laughs> well, well that's I'm cool yeah. that you're gonna get ordained i even made up an acronym for people who work with you they're gonna be called baddies it's the oh. brand new <laughs> alexander disciple experience oh, <laughs> i love that i made up that when i was sleeping <laughs> <laughs> you were over there daydreaming and yeah. uh, like messed me up with an acronym. I was working on an acronym. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So um somatic experiencing, you we could do a consultation. I do have two microdose programs. I recently channeled a microdose guidebook and journal, so that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then I do the uh, weekly ninety minute sessions um with somatic experiencing assisted with microdosing and now uh, as far as the therapy portion, are you um also looking into getting into that or are you yeah. into that so or I, um so I am uh, certified okay. for somatic experiencing. Okay. Um, through some mastery, and then I'm a grad student, so I'm um, in re- rehabilitation. I'm getting my master's in rehabilitation Shout counseling. Out. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So. And then what what letters will that get you eventually? Same as him. <laughs> LPC. <laughs> yep. L- 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 this is my role model. Nice. I'm following yeah. in his footsteps. All right. Thanks the for paving the na- way. Na- well, the funny night. story backstory is I. I was going to say, you're going to have to go to the gym and get (laughs) swolt all the time, dude. Yeah, I've been friends with her sister, Tracy, decades now. So I think originally Mm. I met Brandy. She was probably a little kid. Right. Um, (laughs) And then we reconnected or actually connected. Uh, not too long ago, really. Hey, yeah. kid, we're going to be talking about mushrooms one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of wild how things turn out. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, so that's cool, man. So, um, yeah, other than that, I mean, I, I'm out of questions. You got any questions? Anybody got any questions? Um, I think any uh, any information you'd like to offer up? No, I'm gonna just, get my mom in touch with you. I think she's got some questions. Yeah, please do. But also, thank you all so much for having me. Yeah. Like, it's so great to connect with people and share my story and like let Ian's uh, like le- legacy of legacy, love live yeah. on through me. You know, and so I appreciate what y'all are doing for the community as well. Well, so I appreciate you. that. It's a, it's um, beautiful. It's such a tragic thing, but you made it into a beautiful thing. Aww. And then you said that earlier. You said like your greatest or your your, my greatest tragedy, your greatest my tragedy biggest gift. And the, yeah, man. My and that's like gift. what I see people doing, like that are actually about this shit. Yeah. Like you turn the worst thing that yeah. ever happened into like the best part mm-hmm. of your life. Yeah. yeah. You like I, I mean? won't ever have my little blonde Afro baby, but this is my baby. You right. know, everybody can be my baby. Yeah. And it's, a, it's like, it's <laughs> useful experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's useful experience for everybody else, especially uh, in the grief department, because I know that's really tough. Uh, and then they do have like, mm-hmm. you know, grief share groups and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But uh, there's just 
there's not as many resources for that as mm-hmm. there is because the grief is so individual and so yeah. different for right. everybody. Yeah. I, th- I definitely think, you know, like the, the grief, if you do not deal with it, it, you know, it will sit with you and it'll be a cancer and yeah. it will eat you alive because, you know, I mean, it's tough to lose somebody. I mean, and it also depends on your perspective mm-hmm. of, Hey, is this permanent? Okay. I don't think it is, but you know, it, it's, you know, but it also helps you, uh, be okay with not, uh, you know, you can still yeah. talk to that person and that person mm-hmm. is still with you, yeah. even though they're not physically yeah. with you. Exactly. You know? And I mean, like, I know some of this shit sounds way out there that yeah. I believe in. It sounds hippy dippy yeah, yeah, whatever. It makes me happy. Yeah, so man. Who right. cares, yeah, man? Right. Like I wouldn't be without it, you know? Yeah. So I'm about it. Yeah. It goes yeah. back to what you were saying earlier. What if, you know, people ask, you know, trading one addiction for another and very critical of it. Well, right. you know what? Fuck them. You don't have to be on board with us. You right. Yeah. If it doesn't work for you, don't worry about it. Right. You know? I mean, sure. ultimately, I traded my cocaine addiction for self-love and, <laughs> you know, right. personal growth. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and if that's what I'm addicted to, then so be it. Yeah. I'm cool with it. There you go. Well, <laughs> it, it's a lot less expensive than the cocaine. It, that's right. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> well, anyway, I appreciate Appreciate you coming out. Yeah, thank and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Dusty, as always, dude, the only dad's hat. I love that. <laughs> so I got my new truck. But yeah, tell them about what you do and where your spot is. Well, yeah, I want to give a big shout out to Sessions Wellness Group out in Flower Mound. And that's where I work with Woo. adults, couples, um, families even yeah um it really all depends so we're gonna have to have your boss on one of these days like to where you know because i mean i think it's really a valuable asset that y'all um you know offer to not just it's not just one part of the puzzle it's the whole puzzle together yeah that's what i do out at life path i work with uh, a team of wonderful women and we do multi-systemic therapy and that's when i'm working with a family with a youth or more than one youth that it's involved in it could be drugs or alcohol violence um criminal justice system, all sorts of stuff. And we try to help the family really supporting of the caregivers to help restructure. And oftentimes these caregivers are in recovery themselves or looking to enter recovery. So we're really working on the whole family system. And that's a reason why I've avoided working with youth in private practice because I need mom or dad or grandma on board. And oftentimes they're like, here is my kid, fix that. Yeah, fix (laughs) fix the little fucker. You messed it up. Yeah, you fix it, you messed it up, man. With MST, the parents or caregiver is actively involved in this program. It's voluntarily to support them and the kid to try to get better so they don't end up you know, in drug rehab or taken away from the parent yeah. or in jail or worse. So sure. It's wow. really fulfilling. I got a great. Time. No. And I think, I think it's great that, that it's the whole, you know, like I said, the whole puzzle, it's not just fix my kid, you mm-hmm. know, I yeah. love it. So if you have any questions about that, you can yeah. reach out to me at dusty at sessions, wellness com or D burrows at life bath systems.org. Okay, cool. And feel nice free song. to email him about uh, how he's done better with the microphone this episode. That's and right. I'm sure he would like to hear that. <laughs> I, was, I was really shamed into it. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes tough love works. <laughs> there, you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, Chadwick, as always, a pleasure um, to have you on. Hey, I love you guys. Hey, hey man. man. Hey, man, I love you, man. Hey, man, I love, I love you too. You. But I, want you, I just want you to know one thing. <laughs> I just want you to know one thing. Oh, and one thing only, brother. I love you, okay? And you are welcome, okay, for me being here. That's a, you that's are the whole, so welcome. That's the, one of the things we would do is go, hey, you know, whatever it is, at the end of the day, you're welcome. Hey, man, you when know, you lay your, pet, when when you're you're lay your head you, down yeah, on that little pillow at the end of the day, the pillow, just, just know, and you're just hey, like, man, man, I can't wait to welcome, go to sleep. And the last know? thing you think is, hey, man, <laughs> I sure am welcome for Chad, man. You just, well, I want you to know you are welcome. It's that forced, it's like that, it's that forced, it's that forced gratitude. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I got to be of service today to Chad and Kelly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, well hey, you're welcome for teaching you a little bit of patience. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming on, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, Please like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. Uh, And then we've got somebody good coming next week. Who are we talking about having on? Um, Uh, We got uh, a couple people. And And we're not going to tell you right now. Bonnie from uh, (laughs) Bonnie, my friend I grew up with. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll be next week. Uh, Be sure and, uh, you know, tune in, like, and all what I just already said.
<laughs> exactly. Hey, remember, kids, there is no magic pill for sobriety because if there was, we would all take too many. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> wow.